A very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Off the Press on Plus TV Africa. My name is Felicity Eze Week as always. I'm never alone. I have uh, someone to help make sense of the headlines this morning. He's a legal practitioner. His name is Daniel Udipe. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. I hope you had a good holiday. Absolutely. Because this is the first time we're seeing this year. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, we'll start with the punch. We have uh, the Vanguard donation this day and a bit of sports if we have time uh, we will do that uh, let's start with uh, what's here electricity tariff hike it's daylight robbery labor orders tell federal government uh, that's the screamer on the front page if you've been following the news or you followed the news moments ago you would have seen um, that story or listened to it a bit there are a couple of writers to it too Consumers would be vulnerable if review is not holistic, LCCI. Despite tariff increase, federal government to fund 545 billion naira shortfall. Uh, there are other headlines. Uh, the Department of Petroleum Resources official and others at the scene of the container gas explosion. Uh, that was a sad one. Three persons, I understand, died um, at the scene. I mean, just all rest in peace. Um, Iranian general's killing is also here. IG places police on red alert. Owners of unregistered vehicles in Lagos risk prosecution. I saw that press release from um, El Kana. That's the PRO of the police here in Lagos. Um, Saraki Dogara gets severance package. AIDS lament. Christians are uh, severely prosecuted in, uh, persecuted rather, in Nigeria. Khan backs U.S. Pencom plans pension bond to clear 400 billion naira arrears. Pick your successor, Pastor Bakari urges Buhari. That's an interesting one. Interesting. Um, uh, something on extortion this morning. Uh, CJ and his own show, Sunny says, ex-lawmaker, a liar. Uh, that's uh, for you. ICC, it extends war crime probe to army, Shiites, IPOP clashes. Um, and then on the back page, we have a plea for economic development planning. Uh, this is uh, from Obadi. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's start with this one that's in our faces. We woke up to the news on Saturday, tariff hike, and a lot of persons. Uh, what's your reaction to it based on the headline this morning? Um, I will not be quick to say that. I will not be quick to call it um, a daylight robbery. The truth is, majority of Nigerians, or a good number of Nigerians, understand that the current tariff is not sustainable. We say it's not cost-reflective. We all know that we are, we are not paying enough for it in the sense of you look at the, what it costs to bring it to us. We know that. But basically the problem I have with what has been done is the how. And I really align myself with the position of the Lagos um, Chamber of Commerce and Industry that look, the problem of the power sector is so multifaceted that you cannot just run to the quick fix of increasing tariff. Again, government needs to lead by example. The MDS are one of the, uh, the ministry and department and agencies of government are one of the biggest and you know biggest you know debt holders in, in Nigeria as, as we speak, in terms of not paying you know, what's due to them and what's due to discos and the entire value chain. So the problem basically for me is the approach. You cannot increasing the tariff will not only will not solve the, 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 the problems in the sector. What Nigerians are interested, Nigerians know that they, they have to pay more at some point. But what they expect is that, look, there needs to be development, progress in other indices, the issue of, there are several issues, I can't even start recounting them, in the sector that needs to be addressed, you know, and you're not addressing them, and you're just focusing on them, because that seems to be the obvious thing to do. And we and you know that, even with the increments in the tariff, the, the, the problems remain, you know, unsolved, the problem of AT and C losses, the problem of, 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 the, of the grids, you know, the, the, the issue of, the, of, of investment in the sector, so many multiple issues that you need to address holistically, so that, because, whether you like the non Nigerians are no people they want to enjoy better power but you cannot come and just increase it and they know that for, for, for certain that the results will not be effective will not be immediate not in time in the future so what we need in the power sector is seriousness of purpose a holistic approach in you know tackling the challenges and we know that at some point we lead to increment inside and i just don't mind there are places in this nation where people pay very high for power and they have stable you know people generate their own power so as long as you can Convenient because it's true that when you have generator, you are an independent generator. That's what it means. You, 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 so, so, so Nigerians are not, are not against. 
paying it's it it just reflect, must exactly. reflect in the must, service yes. that they get absolutely okay let, let's look at all the headlines here these um read a lot by the uh, ig over the iranian how does that really affect us it, it, it's, it's obvious you know i mean iranian is, is the most developed sunny country in the world you know and i mean shite i mean to say and and we have a good number right now in, in the nation the, there has been history so guys begin they've, they've allegedly been persecuted in a sense you know so um it only makes sense it's, it's i think it's the obvious it's just in the obvious that there may be some activities that might be detrimental to that may be that might amount to a breach of peace you know so i think it's a step in the right direction we need we don't want we don't want it's not this is not exactly our business to i mean it's, it's i know that you know we need to be sensitive the world is becoming a global village and what have you but at the same time we have our own challenges. We don't want to start getting involved in all of these things. So I just hope that the, the, the faithfuls of this sect of, of Islam will, you know, we just understand. And, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, I, I, we, we have so much to, to deal with as a nation. So I think it's a step in the right direction. The police, I mean, it's even stating the obvious if you ask me. I mean, everybody knows that they want to do one or two things. And I hope that Nigerians will be more alert to cooperate with the security agencies and that we'll have peace. Join AVC 2023 presidency in Gige tells Ewos. Details of that is on page um 18 off the paper if you would like to go take a look at it <laughs> um did you read it i didn't know it but it's just hilarious i mean this kind of approach will not get us anywhere you know trying to whip up sentiments you know it does not work no, but if you if you connect it with um the one on page 16 that says pick your successor pastor bakari urges buhari let's very, talk on the two i know that very hilarious statement i mean i, I i'm wondering what a respected statesman in, in, in the mode of Pastor Bakari is thinking by making. I understand that he has an ambition too, but it, we all know that it is against the the, the 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 essence of democracy for because it is not for the president to pick his successor; it's for the people. So that is for me. That's like you know, you know. Uh, you know, suggesting that the president should have a way because he is not up to him to pick. Are you suggesting that he should, he should, he should manipulate the process and you know, he should have he should weed the influence? We are saying that we don't want that to continue. We are saying that we want an end to that. And then somebody is saying that the president should pick his So I think it's it's a very unfortunate thing if you ask me. It's just a totally uncultural. All right, that's uh, for the punch. Let's see what the Vanguard is telling us today. Uh, the issue of Serap asking Buhari is on the front page to publish their assets, the president and the VP. That should be on your screen right now. You find details on page 10 of the paper. And the big picture here this morning is how FG states, LGs, others shed 8.1 trillion naira in 2019. There's a graphic uh, breakdown for you on the front page. Planned Electricity tariff hike, man, LCCI, JAF, PDP, others kick. That's also on the front page of the paper this morning. Tension rises as U.S. Iran face off escalates. Uh, we also have budget 2020, FG to spend 67 billion naira on rail line from Kanu to Niger Republic, others. Uh, if we go to the top of the paper, you see something on business, I think. Um, CEOs, analysts foresee a challenging year I mean, it's opportunities for growth. And then we have something, uh, Rewani, uh, we have factors that will determine Nigeria's economy in 2020. He did talk about uh, how uh, income is going to shrink at some point. I had to go ask our business correspondent to explain it to me because it can't be shrinking in this economy. You want people to die. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the back page of the Vanguard newspaper, we have sports stories, but we'll get to that in a bit. Let's just get um, Daniel's thought on these headlines on the Vanguard. Which one would you want to speak on first? The one that really jumps to me is the, the yeah, Syrup. syrup yes. Uh, yes. asking Buhari. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just um, unfortunate that, you know, an administration that prides itself in fighting corruption. I mean, I can't start recounting the number of persons who... You know, I've had issues, or who have been, I don't want to use the word victimized by, the, by this admission for, you know, um, let me use the word atrocity related to declaration of, of assets. For that same, you know, administration, for the number one, number two persons, not to, you know, accede to the make request. Public. To, to make public. That. It's just, I mean, and it's obvious, I mean. But some would argue that the, the first thing is to declare the asset, the CCB would have us, um, received it. Uh, making it public is another kettle of fish entirely. What is the essence of, 
what's the essence of declaring it if it's not for it to get the public domain? Is it up to the CCB to, to um, what's the word, to, I did the watchdog? They are just another agency, for God's sake. What is the impact? What is the essence? What's the speed behind that requirement in our laws for asset declaration? Is it for a particular agency of government to just find out about it and then forget about it? No, the essence is to put this to ensure accountability and transparency. You cannot have that when it is not available to the public, when the public cannot ask questions and say, okay, there's been an increment, what's the position right now? It is it is ridiculous to just 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 you know I have got I've heard the argument many times that oh we declare to the to the Code of Conduct Tribunal and, and and, and I mean, and that's it, you know, and, and, and that's just not it. It doesn't end there. They need to make it public. That is what we, you know, we meet the need of transparency and accountability. And that's what we really need. And it's, just, it's just interesting for me. That's, you know, it's, that's yeah. it. I, I don't know how I missed this one. Choir government didn't demolish late uh, Senator Olushala's property. That's committee chair, Le Arubo. That, that was a controversial issue last week. It was headlines everywhere. I don't know if you took a minute to look at it. Uh, but it will be interesting. If you haven't, uh, please go take a look at this headline and catch up on the whole situation with uh, the property of um, the, fa the late father of the former Senate President Bukola Sarachi. I just hope that, you know, and this issue has been on and on in different modes, you know, allegations and counter allegations of people using their their influence and being the court of power to, to do all kinds of things. I just hope that, you know, we've had so many cases and we need to understand that, look, public power is something to be respected. They are, the laws are clear on how to use it. You shouldn't victimize people for being in any particular unit. No prosperity here in view for 2020. That's it. That's a really... Details of 2026, if you would read it, I'm not reading it. Uh, but if you want to get that particular story, how can... No prosperity here. Maybe we should read it so we know what not to do. But what's your take on this caption, quickly? Generally, you know, the, the, the indices are not being... They're not looking good, mm -hmm. um, you know. The consumers are on the receiving end of several. Look, look at the the, the, the the price hike. In the past yeah, but the, I mean the case of the banks that have reduced the charges. Uh, that some would say that's a Somewhere good thing. Somewhere in the in the, in the, in the um, newspaper review, you will come across where the, what, what the banks are now doing is to adjust their ATM machine such that you know where you can now you know withdraw ten thousand before you now have to withdraw ten thousand and five thousand. So that you have to just keep you know they are just adjusting all kind of things to ensure that they make. And I won't blame them; they are business people. So our I would not be too, very excited about that. How much is, 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 that, is that anyways? You know, well, I hope the CBN it, will put at, measures in place to forestall so, such uh, shenanigans. The on, the CBN on so many, so many unfortunate, um, you know. All right, let's move on to the nation newspaper now. Uh, the big one here is outta outrage, rather, outrage as disco set for cost reflective par tariffs. We've taken a look at that extensively um, from the Punch newspaper. Um, we also have um, Bakare admonishes Buhari on secession, Kwara government to seize more houses. How Kaduna gas explosion killed Prof. Uh, Don dies in Baba's shop. Quite a sad one. Uh, chaos as fire races oil market. One killed in mayhem. Exhumed last student's body for reburial interment tomorrow. Uh, so rest in peace. Um, let's see what's uh, Southwest Governors Security Chiefs to meet over Amoteku. Boko Haram presidency allays fears over Chadian troops withdrawal and on the back page we have the situation with Saraki captured there so if you want to go read it uh, please go uh, grab a copy of the paper and uh, read up uh, this person's thoughts on Saraki's sore grapes. Hardball is also here practice what you preach your thoughts please. Um, one that really jump, jumps at me is, is the um move by the Southwest governors. I'm, I'm happy about it. I'm excited about it. It's a high time that you know they start becoming proactive. You know, I've always said that the issue of security is not one to just cross your and right now the law as it is does not totally allow it, you know, because we still have, you know, the issue of policing being a federal matter and all of that. But I'm happy that in the only little way 
I don't know. I've not seen the details of, of the, this Amotecu move, but I hope it really works, and I hope that it gets the backing it, it deserves from the government. The issue of security cannot be left in the hand of the government alone. I am the view that it needs to be one of those issues that police, that states are allowed to you know take care of because, we, of course, we all know the, of the issue of community policing. You know, for it to effectively police, it has to be something that is homegrown, that is local, and all, all that. So I'm excited about it. They are moving. I think they have a meeting today or tomorrow. I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to their their, their, their deliberations. Um, what's your take on the situation, the, the building? I saw a picture of the location where this gas explosion occurred. Should a gas plant be in such a building, in compact space, as we saw in the pictures online? It's really unfortunate. My argument as it, is that gas has come to stay. But what we need to do as a people, as a nation, is to put um, the safety measures. We, we have a very poor record in terms of enforcing safety measures. That gas should never. I mean, it's it is the ABC, it's the basic of of you know use of gas that you don't allow, you don't concentrate it in, in an enclosing, but you want it to be in a place where you know because it has come to stay. As a people, we have more gas than even oil. You know, so it, it has just come to stay in terms of pine, the motivation that is. However, the safety standard needs to be enforced. Nigerians need to, you know, they don't, you shouldn't see that something that's just against them. And all, they need to embrace it. It has come to stay. We need to be very conscious of, of, of the safety standard and we need to enforce and couple with the regulatory agencies. All right, let's jump to this day newspaper. And uh, there's quite an interesting uh, headline. Uh, we are ready to take over security from military in volatile state, says police. Soldiers have no business in internal security spot. Chad withdraws troops as insurgents intensify attacks. That's also on the front page of this day newspaper. Lagos setting out this high cost of role for telecom infrastructure. Uh, banks reconfigure ATMs to beat CBN's <laughs> reduction of charges. You, are, you awesome. probably saw this before yes, now. Yes, CBN vows to investigate sharp practice. Um, we also have FG to underwrite 544.8 billion hour electricity tariffs shortfall. Banks, why would they do that? It's our money. We're giving them to safe keep. They should be grateful and not find ways to exploit us. I give them to safe keep for us at a cost. They want to to maximize that cost as much as possible and make the maximum gains. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make excuses for them. It's unfortunately it's not, it's not acceptable. I hope the CBN, CBN you know, does this food you know, to, to investigate, you know. And they should do more than investigate. We should get to the bottom of it and make sure any bank that is caught is punished, punished severely. <laughs> It's an unfair thing to do. All right, um, which other headline do you want to security. take on? I'm not I'm, I, ordinarily, I should be excited, but right now, the police are under staff. We all know that. And then they are making this statement that you know they're ready to take, up, take over um, security posts that you know, have to be left back, back in by the military. I'm not. I will not. I'm not. I'm not over the moon over that news. You know because you know they are currently under staff. They do they have the necessary you know firepower. Do they have the industry equipment? Those are the basic issues that we that need to address. The issue of banditry, the issue of kidnapping is still going unabated, and they're saying this. And if you, you, you look at the issue of, of Chad withdrawal as well, and it's like that, that it's part and parcel of the arrangement, with, that's the multinational joint tax or what have you. I just hope, I'm not, I'm not excited as well, you know, because I mean, right now, our security agencies are overstretched. And now all the the defense headquarters are telling us that we should not worry that you know. That they, they what about the argument that soldiers have no business in internal security? Because I mean, we do know that just recently uh, that um, show ident something about uh, identify yourself a recent move yes, yes. Uh, by the soldiers. People complained about it. Indeed, that's yeah. correct. Indeed, soldiers in civilized climes do not have any business with internal security. However. Is a peculiar but if they don't try, how will we make that change of having soldiers out on the streets, um, out of our streets the, the and police is instead? Not, I mean, We're not ready for that. That's not even my point. You, I, I, I guess so. You, maybe you're right. But my point is, this is not a laboratory test. It's not for them to now start and say, oh, let's see if you're ready. You know, let's let's take charge. If they're not capable, you don't don't juggle lives of people. They need to be. They need to get more more people incorporated into the police system. They need to they need to be equipped. Those are the issues. We should not just try and say, oh, let's see. Let like just leave it for them. If they can't do a good job, we shouldn't we should allow them to do it. Security is, is, is so fundamental. So that's the number one duty of, of government, which should be taken with seriousness. I think that's my opinion, really. All right, on the back page of this day newspaper, we have edifying elucidation. Uh, today, the 
headline is the science in the sky. There's a picture of the Minister of Science and Technology. What's the connection? You might want to go take a look at it. And so just take a quick look at the back of the, uh, the front page of the um, uh, sports newspaper. That's Complete Sports. And then a quick glance at uh, Vanguard Sports if we have um, a little more time. On the front page of the Complete Sports, we have um, Osimen Amunike's the key to my success, who is speaking? Osimen speaking. And then uh, Eagles Euro Roundup. Eagles Euro Roundup. Chukweze makes 30th La Liga start. Ihana Cho denied chance to make FA Cup history. Uh, Oye Kuru to earn 262 million naira in six months. That's a lot of money. Uh, not for sale. The Chelsea Arsenal told Alaba. Botang are going nowhere. Uh, records Messi Ronaldo can break in 2020 inside the pages of the complete sports. And on the back page of the Vanguard, we have some story. Uh, CAF Awards, Salah um, eyes a hat trick on home soil. That's um, on the front page and the back page of the Vanguard. And then we have Nigerian agent demand 19.5 billion naira from Chelsea. That's Sanko. I guess that's where we're going to wrap things up this morning on the newspaper review. We want to thank our guests very kindly for coming on the program this morning. Um, legal practitioner uh, Daniel Udupe, pleasure, pleasure to have you join us. To Look forward to more times here on After Press. And thank you for watching. That's it. Thanks for your time again. Do enjoy the rest of your morning. May the week be good to you.